But he is young and friendly. Who can play? Now it's, now it's New York. Until three more strangers come down the road carrying strange, menacing objects. Hello, my bookish friends. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Elizabeth. This is Reading Riley, where we like to read Riley, not take ourselves too seriously, and have some fun with books. I'm doing a book haul today. And it'll be sweet, oh so sweet, when you read Riley. Look, stop judging me. I can't help myself. Stop judging me. I'm already judging myself on the inside, okay? I don't need it from you. It happened. It just happened. There were sales, there were things I couldn't resist, and I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry one bit. I have a book of the month book, some Costco books, one from a friend, Barnes and Noble books, and I have one from Goodreads. I actually won a Goodreads giveaway, but it's kind of problematic now, and we'll get to it. Okay, so where should I start? Let's start with the shorter stacks. Um, first and foremost, my lovely friend Kara gave me this book, and it is a it is a choose-your-own-adventure erotic fantasy book. We're doing it. We're gonna do it. I mean, it's a pretty cool cover. I've never read a choose-your-own-adventure, so why not a choose-your-own-adventure erotica? No qualm here. Let's see what the first sentence is. Oh, this is called Club 42 by Joanna Angel. First sentence. Get on stage and show me what you can do. Oh. Oh, this is exciting. And it has like a little lady on a pole. Can you see? Oh, damn. Oh. I'm gonna save that for nighttime. Next, I have my book of the month book. And this month I chose The Maidens by Alex. Uh, I always struggle with this name. Alex Michaelidis. Potentially. Michaelidis. Michaelidis. Michaelides. It could be so many things. Anyways, The Maidens, a psychological suspense, dark academia. There is this professor, he teaches Greek literature and he has this following of students. They call themselves The Maidens and it's almost like this culty kind of thing. But then someone related to the group of The Maidens or in The Maidens dies, gets killed, murdered. And there's another woman who has had some kind of traumatic past. She's on to this professor. She thinks it's him. She might risk her life in trying to solve it. I'm very excited for this. I'm gonna be buddy reading this with my buddy James at James's Space. So I'll probably get started with that tomorrow, actually. Very excited for this one. It's a five-star prediction for me. And let's see the first line. Lest we forget the first line. Edward Fosca was a murderer. Well, there goes the mystery there. These next couple books I found at Costco. Man, Costco is just dangerous. It's a dangerous place. You walk in there going to get some fucking quinoa and you leave with books. Like it's just trickery and fuckery. I still love it. So I went to Costco and I wound up with two books. The first of which I heard someone talking about recently and I don't remember who it was. I have seen the movie. I don't think I even realized this was a book. I don't remember the movie. It's been so long. I think this came out in the late 90s or the early 2000s and that is Mystic River by Dennis Lehane. So let's see what it's about. So when they were children, Sean Devine, Jimmy Marcus, and Dave Boyle were friends. But then a strange car pulled up to their street. One boy got in the car, two did not, and something terrible happened. Something that ended their friendship and changed all three boys forever. So I think this is a dual timeline because then it says 25 years later, Sean is a homicide detective. Jimmy is an ex-con who owns a corner store and Dave is trying to hold his marriage together and keep his demons at bay. Oh, and then Jimmy's daughter gets murdered and he has to investigate. Maybe these two timelines have something to do with each other. And the movie's coming back to me now because it has that one girl that I really like. She was in Phantom of the Opera and I just think she's gorgeous, but I don't, that's all I really remember. So, ah, excited for that. Pretty cover too. First line, ah! I'm gonna get used to this first line thing. Part one, the boys who escaped from wolves, 1975. The point and the flats. First line, when Sean Devine, Devine? 
Uh. When Sean Devine and Jimmy Marcus were kids, their fathers worked together at the Coleman Candy Plant and carried the stench of warm chocolate back home with them. Hmm, I wouldn't mind the stench of warm chocolate. That sounds lovely. The next book I also got from Costco. I just saw it and I could not say no. And that is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. If you watch this channel, you know I just read The Martian as well as his short story, The Egg, which if you have not heard of, please read it. It's three pages and it's freaking amazing. From what I know, we're following Ryland Grace and he is, I think he's a teacher on Earth. Of course on Earth. But he wakes up in space with two other people with him who are dead. He's lost his memory. He has no idea why he's here, how he got here, what's going on. But apparently he comes, he starts to kind of get his memory back. He realizes that he has been sent on a mission to save Earth from some kind of natural disaster. And now he's the only one who can do it. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good reviews and I'm... This is another one of my five star predictions, which I'll be making a video about coming up shortly. So let's look at the first line, shall we? Shall we? Jesus, get to the damn first page. God damn, Andy Weir. Okay. What's two plus two? Not the best first line I've ever heard. Don't worry, Andy. I'm still on your side. I'm still going to read you. This next book is my Goodreads giveaway that I finally won one of. <sighs> it's called Lesson in Red by Maria Hummel. It looks great. It's supposed to be set in like the art scene in, what is it? Is it New York? Oh, it's LA. So set in Los Angeles, power, gender, set in the world of still lives. Okay, that therein comes the problem is that this is the second book in a series. Ah! So now I feel obligated to review this, but I've never read the first book. So I think I'm going to have to go back and get the first book. Anyway, this is a thriller and it's, it does entice me. So I'll have to do some digging, find the first one. It's called Still Lives. Reese Witherspoon says, a thrilling mystery that will leave you wondering which characters you can and can't trust. There's a twist at the end that still keeps us up at night. It's that good. So, you know, why not? I found out that a Barnes and Noble near my house is closing. And while that makes me very sad to see any bookstore go, even if it's a giant conglomerate, everything was 50% off. Na -na -na. So you know I went in there and got some books. I took my four-year-old stepdaughter and she got books and I got books and everyone was happy. It was like a fucking fairy tale. I couldn't say no. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thriller and horror books that I picked up. Some of these were like $3. Okay, so this one is an author that I have just read for the first time and enjoyed. So I picked up actually two of her books. This particular one, I'm gonna wait till winter to read when it's cold out and that is Winter People. Surprising, uh, by Jennifer McMahon. I read The Drowning Kind by her and I did enjoy it. So, and I've heard good things about this. So I'm definitely gonna check this out, but I wanna wait till it's like cold and it's, the, it's vibey and atmospheric, but I have no idea what it's about. So some secrets never die. West Hall, Vermont has always been a town of strange disappearances and old legends. The most mysterious is that of Sarah Harrison Shea, who in 1908 was found dead in the field behind her house just months after the tragic death of her daughter. Oh no. Now in the present day, oh, it's another dual timeline. So I love those. 19 year old Ruthie lives in Sarah's farmhouse with her mother, Alice, and her youngest sister. Alice has always insisted that they live off the grid, a decision that has weighty consequences when Ruthie wakes up one morning to to find that Alice has vanished. In her search for clues, she is startled to uncover a copy of Sarah Harrison Shea's diary, oh, hidden beneath the floorboards of her mother's bedroom. As Ruthie gets sucked into the historical mystery, she discovers that she's not the only person looking for someone they've lost. She may be the only one who can stop history from repeating itself. Oh, yes, that sounds really good. Let's get into the first line. Did you guys know they have new paperbacks, mass market paperbacks that are like, long and skinny now? I should have bought one of those. I didn't realize that was a thing and they were so cool. Okay, so it starts in 1908. Oh, and this is an excerpt from Sarah Harrison Shea's diary, January 29th, 1908. The first time I saw a sleeper, I was nine years old. Oh shit, a sleeper. Is it a ghost? 
what is it? I don't know, I'm intrigued. My second Jennifer McMahon is The Invited. I think this is a ghost story too. I know nothing about this except it's by that author. It says, in a quest for a simpler life, Helen and Nate have abandoned their comforts of suburbia to take up residence on 44 acres of rural land. She likes this rural trope middle of nowhere type of vibe. They will begin the ultimate aspirational do-it-yourself project, building the house of their dreams. Oh, I wanna build the house of my dreams. When they discover that this beautiful property has a dark and violent past, Helen, a former history teacher, becomes consumed by the local legend of Hattie Breckenridge, a woman who lived and died there a century ago. Three generations of Breckenridge women, each of whom died suspiciously. Okay, all right. The invited, the invited. Who is invited? Who? We'll see. Let's read the first line. It says, Hattie Breckenridge, May 19th, 1924. It had started when Hattie was a little girl. Not bad. Not great, but not bad, first line. All right, the next one is another author that I have never read, but that I've heard good things about. This is a horror, and it is by Mr. Paul Tremblay, and it's called The Cabin at the End of the World. I think this is like a culty horror type thing. Seven-year-old Gwen and her parents, Eric and Andrew, are vacationing at a remote cabin in New Hampshire, a handful of miles from the Canadian border. Cut off from urgent hum of cell phones and from the internet, they are more than two miles away from their closest neighbors. Uh-oh. You gonna get in trouble. You gonna need some help. You gonna need some help. What? She's gonna need some help. Mm. On the summer day, when Wen catches grasshoppers in the front yard, a stranger unexpectedly appears. Leonard is the largest man with Wen has ever seen. <laughs> I think I just went from English to, to like Georgian. But he is young and friendly, with a warm smile that wins her over almost instantly. Leonard and Wen continue to talk and play. Now it's, now it's New York. Until... <laughs> until three more strangers come down the road carrying strange, menacing objects. In a panic, Wen tells Leonard that she must go back into the cabin. Now it's Michigan. <laughs> oh, I'm crazy. But before she goes, her new friend tells her, none of what's gonna happen is your fault. You haven't done anything wrong, but the three of you will have to make some tough decisions. I wish with all my broken heart you didn't have to. As Wen sprints away to warn her parents, Leonard calls out, Your dads won't want to let us in, Wen, but they have to. We need your help to save the world, please. Did I actually understand anything I just read? Halty people trying to save the world. Poor little girl and her dads. Gonna be scary. First line. Yeah, I'm gonna crack the spine. Ugh. Come for me. Come for me. Chapter one, when the girl with the dark hair walks down the wooden front stairs and lowers herself into the yellowing lagoon of ankle high grass. Ooh, atmospheric, absolutely atmospheric. I'm interested for sure. Next is a new release that I've been kind of on the fence about honestly, but it was half off and the cover is beautiful. It's kind of a cover by, I'll probably read it too though. I wanna hear what people are saying about this and that is the ones we're meant to find. This is by, Joan He. I know it's about two sisters. This cover is reminding me of Island of the Blue Dolphins. Did anyone else? <gasps> there is a huge bug. Hold on. Ah! Ah! There's another one! <gasps> What's happening? I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I didn't get the second one. I don't know where he went. Now I'm scared. Okay. Does this remind anyone else of Island of the Blue Dolphins? Did you guys ever have to read that in like fifth grade? Cause I did. And this cover is giving me those vibes. But from what I know, there's these girls or one of these girls wakes up on an island and I think she loses her memory and she... I found it. <gasps> I don't know what you are. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, go outside. Go back to your home! Oh my god, okay, we're safe. We're safe! Okay, what's this about? What the fuck is this about? 
It's been three years and 17 days since C woke up on the shore of an abandoned island. She has no idea how she came to be marooned or what her life was like before, but she has only the rickety house by the sea and the android she built for company and a single memory. Somewhere beyond the horizon, she has a sister and it's up to C to escape the island to find her. Okay, so that's all I want to get into about it, but I'm guessing, I feel like this is going to be, and I could be totally wrong, but I feel like it's going to be like one of those experimental things where like maybe they signed up for some kind of experimental drug or something and she's in some kind of scientific like experiment. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. First line, I wake on my feet, wind tangled in my hair. It's a YA thriller, I think. Okay, three more. My next book is the second book by Samantha Downing. I have her next book pre-ordered that's coming out this year for your own good because I loved my lovely wife, but I've never read her second book. So we're gonna read that before the new one comes out. This is something about a group of kids, uh, family, like cousins or brothers and sisters or something, and they have to get together because their like grandpa passed away and he told them what they're inheriting or what have you, but they can't have it until they all go on this road trip together. As they're on the road trip, Secrets unfold. We have some kind of conflict. This chick's carrying a shovel. Are they gonna kill one of them? Are they killing them for the money? Does it get like that? I don't know. I don't know, but I know Samantha Downing is not afraid to go where some people are afraid to go. A twisty, sneaky tale of greed, lies, and betrayal with each character as conniving as the next and an ending that will make your heart stop. Mm. Okay. Uh, I see you, girl. Okay, first line says 14 days left. You want a heroine. You want a heroine. Not you want heroin. You want a heroin. Hmm. Okay. The next book is a thriller that I also got at Barnes and Noble by a another author that I've just recently picked up for the first time, and that is An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. I read The Couple Next Door by her and enjoyed that, and I thought it was really fast paced. So I wanted to try to get into some more of hers. And this is another one that's got like a wintry vibe. So I may hang on to this for like the winter months as well. It says perfect for fans of Agatha Christie. It's winter in the Catskills. So we're talking New York. And Mitchell's Inn is the perfect setting for a relaxing, maybe even romantic weekend away. It boasts spacious old rooms with a huge wood burning fireplaces and well stocked wine cellar. Mmm, that sounds amazing. And it's ideal for just curling up with a good murder mystery. Yes, please. So when a blizzard cuts off the electricity, uh oh, and all contact with the outside world, the guests settle in and try to make the best of it. Soon, though, one of the guests turns up dead. Ah! Okay, so this is a, a locked door mystery. When the second guest dies, the other starts to panic. Within this note in paradise, something or someone is picking off the guests one by one. And there's only one thing they can do but hunker down and hope they can survive the storm and one another. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's read the first line. To mum. Mum. Chapter one, Friday at 4.45 p.m. The road curves and twists unexpectedly as it leads higher and deeper into the Catskill Mountains, as if the farther you get from civilization, the more uncertain the path. Ugh, like it, I like it. I'm here for it, I like it. Okay, the last book I have is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I still haven't finished uh, or even started. <laughs> the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, but I just have a feeling of an inkling that I'm gonna love his writing. I hope so, because I bought the second book of his. I don't know what order they were written or anything, but second of mine. And this one's just like too cool to pass up, right? I got it for $7. I mean, how? It's about this store that's supposed to be like a knockoff of Ikea, obviously. This is supposed to look like an Ikea catalog. It's written, it's like multimedia type text stuff. Yeah, it says, what does it say? Something strange is happening at the Orsk Furniture Superstore in Cleveland, Ohio. Every morning employees arrive to find a broken, caring bookshelves, shattered glands of water goblets, and smashed Larry Beep wardrobes. Sales are down, security cameras reel nothing, and store managers are panicking to unravel the mystery. Three employees volunteer to work a nine hour dust till dawn shift. In the dead of the night, they'll patrol the empty showroom floors, investigate strange sights and sounds, and encounter horrors that defy the imagination. As I stared into the darkened void, imagining the hordes of devils soon to spring forth, I couldn't help but ponder. 
How deep does that hole go? So yeah, it's a horror. I don't even know what the first line is supposed to be because it's like weird and shit. Yeah, but you know what? That's all. I can't, I don't even know how to. So we're gonna leave it at that. That's it. That's my um, book haul. 12 books and it's getting hot in here too. Let me turn the AC back on. Yeah, have you guys read these? Have you read these? Do you know anything about them that I should know? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Did you, did you read this? first one of this can you tell me anything about it or where i'm supposed to find it like i really need to know oh my gosh i didn't even count some of these i think i have more than 12. that's a lot of books it's a lot oops i did it again oh i am so ridiculous today this is so dumb yeah let me know if y'all are interested in these. And um, that's gonna be it today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're still here, I appreciate you. If you are so inclined, please consider hitting that subscribe button or hitting that like button. I'll see you guys next time. Keep your eye out for my five-star prediction video. That'll probably be out next. And until then, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And don't forget that life is short. So read Riley. Cheers.